So welcome, welcome to our kitchen. I'm Holly from The Cooking Family and I'm joined here by Abigail. Hi everybody. She is a great hand in the kitchen. And today we're gonna show you how we make homemade bone broth in our Instant Pot. And also ham and beans. And we're gonna start with our homemade bone broth. Um, if we would also like to just quickly say, uh, we'd like you to go and like us on Facebook or go check out our Facebook and our website. We're The Cooking Family. And um, let's get started. Sure. Okay, so ever since, so I used to make bone broth quite a bit. I would make it in my slow cooker. I would make it on the stove. It took hours and um, I couldn't have soup with my homemade bone broth that evening. I had to plan way ahead. And once I got my Instant Pot, it really revolutionized uh, broth making in my house because you can just throw all the ingredients in. I usually do that in the morning or even at night. Throw it all in and um, it tends itself. It's not going to boil over. It's not going to uh, do anything on the stove. I feel uh, comfortable going outside, going for a walk while it's cooking. No problem. So we make it at least once a week here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is an eight quart instant pot. I found that for me the bone broth was um, not enough in just our six quart for our family. So uh, what we do, what do we do Abigail? Tell them about this. Well, we take the, we take the bones from rotisserie chickens that we pick and we put them in a bag and we label it bones and uh we then put it in the instant pot and make it broth yeah so we keep these in the freezer um my husband brings home rotisserie chickens from costco or sam's pretty often and that's a meal prep thing that we do um, we pick off the chicken we dice it up we've got the meat in the freezer and then we have the bones to use for broth so we just keep these in the freezer about two carcasses of chicken bones um, from a rotisserie chicken is about what this is. And it's about the right amount for a large batch. And um, you want about two pounds, two to three pounds of bones for your bone broth. And here in this bag, we have all the little scraps from anytime we cut celery, onions, and carrots primarily, sometimes garlic. We keep this in the freezer so that any time we want to make broth, it is really quick to just put it together right in here. Here's a nice piece of celery. Celery has so much flavor. Um, I used to throw away all the, the celery leaves that are in the middle, but then I found out that they have a ton of flavor. So they go right in this bag um, or in soup, but if we're just using it for sticks or something, you know, nobody wants to eat the celery leaves because they are super strong in flavor. So here you go. Um, also in our, our bone broth, we put in a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar. This has the mother in it, so we shake it up a little bit. Um, just a couple of tablespoons. And you can measure this or you can just put some in. And eyeball it. Eyeball it. Um, but, but you don't want a ton. It won't taste like vinegar, I promise. Abigail, what do you have here? I have, whoop, I have bay leaves, and uh, they just give your food lots of flavor and put like three or four small Yeah, leaves. if they're small leaves, three or four, two or three, you can break them up. You do want to take these out because they're um, not edible. Um, I have found a great place to buy bay leaves is in bulk. Um, because they're a ton less expensive. That little can um, really doesn't hold that many bay leaves and it's like three or four dollars. If you buy them in bulk at a higher end grocery store, um, Whole Foods, Sprouts, where else? Central Market has um, bulk spices and you can find bulk bay leaves. You can also find them at international stores like an Indian grocery store, they'll have a lot bigger packages of those and for a lot less money than um, at the regular Walmart or grocery store. Okay, we use about um, 10 to 20 peppercorns. Um, one time, <laughs> one, 
One time, Elijah put in probably almost a quarter cup of peppercorns. Oh, my goodness. And we had pepper broth, but it actually tasted fantastic. Yes. Other, okay, and then fresh water. Other ingredients that you can add to flavor up. This is what we do just as a normal, everyday broth for regular soups. But if, you're, if you want to make, uh, just flavor them up a little bit more, you can use ginger. You can add garlic. Uh, you can add, some people add uh, turmeric, um, but you can add pretty much anything. You don't want to use any vegetable cuttings. Um, you really don't want to use kale or cabbage or any cruciferous vegetables um, because those have a, kind of a really strong flavor that's not super appealing once it's been simmering for a long time. Okay, so now we're going to close up our lid and we're going to make sure our... our uh, valve is on sealing and not venting okay i've had this on keep warm but now i'm going to just cancel that out and i have my soup already set to i do about 180 minutes um, you can even make chicken broth if you don't have this is what three hours we don't so you can also do your broth um you can do your broth for as little as about 30 minutes 60 minutes is fine. You just get more out of your um, bones the longer it cooks. But you don't want to do it terribly long. So we do uh, usually 120, which is two hours to three hours, two to three hours. And then, and this takes a while. So um, set it up in the morning and you can use it in your soup that night. I also love doing it overnight before I go to bed. I can throw in a batch and then it's ready in the morning. Um, the Instant Pot keeps on keep warm at a food safe temperature. Not gonna hurt it a bit. It sits there all night and then in the morning I can strain it into jars. So um, bone broth is a great ingredient to use because it has a lot of health benefits. Um, it's gut healing, it is anti-inflammatory, it has collagen and gelatin. Um, I really like to use homemade broth instead of those jars of like better than bouillon or bouillon cubes because I know exactly what's in there. I can totally control those ingredients. So if you haven't been making your own broth, I would really encourage you to try. It also tastes really good. And it's simple. And it's super simple. So uh, we don't put any salt in our broth until we are using it for cooking or using it to drink. Yeah. Um, every now and then we have a wonderful cup of broth. We should do it more, but I sometimes forget. So um, I'm going to show you some results of broth that we did, which I found really interesting. Um, here we have um, this one is broth that's been in our fridge for a couple days since our last batch when we made it. You'll see the fat has solidified up here at the top. This is just chicken fat. Um, you can uh, just spoon it off. Once it solidifies, it comes off much easier. Um, and this one was just regular rotisserie chicken carcasses. This batch, and you can see the different colors. This batch I made with raw chicken thighs and I just threw them in. Um, and notice how much lighter this is. And I believe that's because it's raw and there's no mylard, there's no browning from the rotisserie um, chicken. It's just from raw chicken. It also, it also has, uh, I used purple, I use a lot of purple onions or red onions. And you can see a little bit of that purple red color in there. Um, and that gives it a lot of color to your broth as well. And this one is from some chicken bones that we had grilled and so the ends were kind of blackened and so it gave it a really nice caramely color. So I just wanted to show you that your broth is gonna turn out different colors based on what kind of chicken you use, what all's in there, like your carrots could give it a little bit of an orange flavor. So if you're heavy on carrots, it might, I mean an orange color, not flavor. Mm -hmm. um, it might just affect that color. So I'm gonna show you how to take this fat off. Now, um, the fat is good for you and fat is very satisfying, especially if you have organic chicken bones. I would not remove the fat unless you're really um, watching your weight. 
Um, but if you want to spoon off the fat, sometimes there will be a thick layer. I have found that the first jar that I strain out has the most fat, usually. Um, so if you're going for less fat, um, use the later jars. But the first jar usually will have a, a thick layer, depending. Unless we had like a two inch layer. Yeah, we had a two inch layer, and that really, it just depends on your chicken, how much fat was on that chicken. Um, so for me, I'm not worried about getting every little bit out. Okay, so we're just gonna set that fat aside. Uh, you can even use that fat, it's called schmaltz. Um, a lot of um, a lot of Jewish people will cook in chicken fat, so um, it can have a really great flavor. And like you can fry lot keys. You would want to uh, cook out the liquid before you put it away, and we store it in the freezer because we've had it go bad in the fridge, where like um, bacon grease doesn't go bad in the fridge, but the chicken fat because it has some broth in it, it will go bad eventually. Okay. So now we're gonna show you how we strain our chicken broth. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time reading and researching and kind of laboring. My personality is I tend to go a little bit perfectionistic, but um, as a mom with seven children, I can get, it just, I don't have time to be perfectionistic. So, um, in the Julia Child cookbook, it says, so, so a lot of people will talk about having clear chicken stock. And um, I, I had to wrestle through, is that important to me? So in the Julia Child cookbook, if you want clear stock, you can use egg whites and you, you take your broth. When it's cold, you take all the fat out. You have to strain every little piece of this out pick it all out and make sure it's completely free of any grease. Make sure your pot that you're gonna cook this in is completely 100% clean, uh, totally sterile, no, no uh, contaminants in it. And then break several egg whites with no yolk because the yolk would mess up the egg whites because it would add fat back into your situation and you, um, you, hurry, you um, put those egg whites in there, then you cook up the broth with the egg whites while you whisk it together, and then those egg whites will absorb and pull out any uh, things, Colors. particles and things, and it will produce a really clear, crystal clear broth, like if you're gonna serve a fancy, fancy meal. But, um, I decided that for a Tuesday night vegetable soup, we don't need crystal clear broth. <laughs> no. no, that seems ain't like nobody a got lot time for that. For just clear yes, broth. a lot of work for just crystal clear broth. So that became not a priority for me. So here's an, another way of getting it a little bit more clear than we do, um, is to take your cheesecloth. And I, for a while, I did that. And um, yes, that's even ideal. But for an every week thing, having this um, cheesecloth became a laundry problem, <laughs> honestly, because you get this chicken broth in here and it's all stuck in, it doesn't get washed, and then you're trying to make chicken broth again, and it's like, I've got this piece of cheesecloth all dirty. And so we just kind of threw that out. So here is what we really do on a daily, weekly basis um, to strain our chicken broth. So we have this, we have this little um, mesh strainer. It used to have a handle on it like this and thankfully it broke off because this has become the best tool that I've found for straining chicken broth. And so we put this right inside the lid. We have this uh, wide mouth funnel, canning jar funnel. And then I'm gonna open up the pot that has some already cooked broth. Okay, so I'm gonna move this um, pot out of the way. This is our broth that's already, that we just started. It's not under pressure, so I'm gonna move it. Just real quick, and Abigail, you can move that other one up. It's also not under pressure. Okay, okay.
Okay, and I'm going to show you. We, we made this one. This is one I put on overnight last night. And when I woke up, I, um, it was still had a little bit of pressure in it. And I've let it cool off because at the very beginning, when you open this up, if you, um, if you open it up when it's still on keep warm, it's very hot and you will need hot pads. But this has been cooling off for a little while, but it's still warm. Okay, and then I take, you don't have to take this. You, if you don't have a spider, this is called a spider. It's really handy for straining, for blanching. It's a handy tool. So I take this, but if you don't have one, you can just carefully pour and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so here's me trying to pour it in and sometimes those little onions and things float out. And Abigail, you can take that spider and then if we can hold those back, it just helps a ton to just pour this right in very quick and easy. And it looks so fabulous and golden, I love that. Okay, let me show you two. So this one is a wide mouth jar, and here is a narrow mouth. It doesn't fit as well. The funnel fits in here, and then I end up having to put this strainer up higher, but that's okay. So we just have to raise it up a little higher and then strain that in. And then we keep these in the fridge. They keep in the fridge for up to a week. Um, you can heat it up. Like if you know you're gonna use it in eight days, you can heat it up on day four and bring it to a boil and let it boil for a couple minutes. And then it's like having brand new fresh broth. You can still keep it in your fridge. Um, if you're gonna keep it any longer than a week, then you will want to um, store it in the freezer. So you have a couple choices with storing it in the freezer. Abigail, what happens um, one of those is a freezer bag, Ziploc freezer bag, just a clear freezer bag. But what's the downside of those? Uh, well, I know that food expands when it gets frozen. Yes. So it can pop open but the bag. But a lot of times when we get those out to thaw, they end up having a hole in the corner. Oh, right. And so then you have water, brothy water. <laughs> brothy water and it leaks and um, it just became a real pain. And so, um, because of the Instant Pot, we've been able to just have the fresh broth and not bother with freezing it anymore. Um, but if that works for you, then awesome. Another way that you can freeze them is using ice cube trays. So, uh, and some people even cook this down to a, like a more gelatinous form and um, put it in ice cube trays and freeze it and then pull, put those into Ziploc bags. So we are done with this and you can take it. Okay, so if you do use a Ziploc bag, a zip top bag, you will want to store it and freeze it flat, like a flat as a pancake. And that's gonna give you the fastest thawing result. If you just um, store it in a, like a, sit it like a hunk, it will take forever to thaw out. Um, and don't forget to label your bag because um, you might not be able to remember what was in there and things in the freezer do not look like they were fresh. So, no. okay. Uh, next we're going to show you how we make our ham and beans. So I'm going to move this pot out of the way and we're going to just kind of get those ingredients out for the ham and beans. This one is an empty pot. Okay. And the reason we um, wanted to show you ham and beans this week is because a lot of people eat uh, ham on Easter. So our family, a lot of times we'll have ham on Easter. And so here we have um, the nice spiral sliced ham from our Easter dinner. But then we have, a lot of times we'll have some leftover ham from that. And we just wanted to show you what we do with it. So here are our slices and then if we have leftover ham, we will take, um, go, can you get those, the ham that Abigail sliced up the ham today. How was that? It was very messy. <laughs> it's very, very liquidy. And so, but, so we started off with a spiral sliced ham. This is another thing we often do for meal prep because we love having a ham bone 
first soup beans, but then we um, will take any leftover ham from a meal, or if we just use the whole ham to do meal prep, we'll do a bag or two of diced ham, and then a couple bags of sliced ham, and then we use these for sandwiches, um, we use it for salad, we use it for scrambled eggs. And we, these, sorry, <laughs> these okay. are uh, just chunks that the slicer spiral or miss. So we just put that in our food processor and make it into ham salad. It's really good. Yes, ham salad is something that I had as a kid and I loved it, but uh, I kind of forgot about it for a long time. So, so that's how we process this. And then we have easy, quick meat options. Um, especially for if we forget to prepare or have only um, only frozen, these thaw out really fast. Especially again if you freeze them flat. So here you go. Thank you, baby. Okay, so here is our ham bone that's left, and so you're we're not gonna get all the ham off. You're it's not gonna get all the impossible. ham off. And the great thing is, if you were just chucking this bone and throwing it away, you would be throwing away a lot of meat. A lot of really good meat but if you save it and use it for soup then um, you have saved on your labor because it comes off a lot easier after you cook it so when you're making this you take out the trivet you don't need it and then you're just gonna put your ham hock in there your big ham bone I didn't even touch it so my hands aren't messy it poured right out of the bag and then we have the okay you can use any beans with this soup um, our favorite are great northern beans, but um, we couldn't find any great northern beans in the store this week or last week or the week before. So we're using 15 bean soup. Um, and this is a mixture of beans. I think it's really pretty, um, especially in the bag. And so um, the strainer, I'm going to pour it in here. When you're using dried beans, you want to just sort through quickly. Now, this soup has a packet. This flavor packet has things like um, MSG, sometimes the soybean, uh, isolated soybean, hydrolyzed soy protein, which is a flavor enhancer, I think. Um, and any and some other ingredients that you we don't want to eat that we're kind of anti packet so we just throw the packet away <laughs> and then we sort through these dried beans and aren't they pretty make sure there you don't see any rocks or any uh, really dirty gross looking beans there definitely will be rocks I found several in one packet yeah. at once <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna go rinse these while Abigail shows you and explains how to cut up an onion. So these are the three ingredients, just the ham bone, onion, and the beans. So uh, you have your cut glove. Don't forget your cut glove. And uh, you, what you're going to do is... Can you talk a little bit louder, please? Yes. Uh, so you're just going to cut off this stem end because you don't need that. And then you're going to just sit this in your trash bowl. And later and we'll use that to make broth. Yes. And I would just pinch off these little hairs. You don't want them in your soup. So uh, you just pinch them off. That way you don't have to cut off the root. And you don't want to cut off the root because then your onions will just fall apart and you don't want that. So uh, you're going to cut it in half right down the middle. And you don't want this papery stuff in your f food either. So you're going to just peel that off. And if your bottom looks like the under your first layer of papery skin, if it looks bad, which this looks beautiful, uh, you just peel off another layer. Don't worry about wasting it. And I just go ahead and do both at the same time. And so then what you do is you kind of um, cut it in like rays of the sun, um, like sticks would you say? At, at um, an angle. Yeah. Okay. Can you turn it a little bit more? There you go. And so you're just going to uh, do that until it's completely cut. And then you're going to dice it. You're just going to um, dice it across the rays. And you kind of want to make them a little small. 
And then once you get to here, then you don't have to worry about wasting that. But um, if you don't want to waste it, you just cut off those little dice spots and then you just throw that in your uh, bras bowl. And then you set that aside and do your other half. Go right ahead, girl. Uh, I wanted to show you these beans. I just think they're so pretty when they're wet. They get all glossy. Black beans are also really beautiful. So um, we're going to pour these beans in right on top of our ham bone. Um, we are just doing very, very simple soup for this recipe. And we're just doing the ham, beans, and onion. If you want to make it, and it is so, so good. It's so simple. I can almost, um, I almost can't believe it every time we make it. And it's like, oh my goodness, this is just three ingredients and it's so yummy. Um, but you can also add, if you want to add just a little bit more flavor and you have celery and carrots and a little bit more time on your hands, celery and carrots are great. Garlic is an excellent addition. Um, you can do lots of different things with this. Um, even a can of tomatoes would be fabulous in it, but it is super simple. Just trust me and try it. It's super simple just with ham and beans and onion. And also, because you're using your ham bone, we're just going to use water. Um, could I get some water, please, in those empty bone broth jars? Um, so... It's super simple to make, and we're just going to use water because we have a built-in bone broth that we're using in here with our, our beans. Um, so we're going to add water, and I um, just want to say a little word about soup. Um, we love soup in our house. A lot of our recipes are soup. A lot of the dinners that we eat are soup because it's super yummy. It's super easy. It's really budget-friendly. Thank you so much. Here's our fresh water. This is just plain old water. We're not using broth because there's going to be a ton of flavor coming out of this ham. Um, we're not going to add any salt because the ham also adds plenty of salt. Usually we don't have to add any salt even at the end, but we'll taste it and correct for seasoning at the end. Um, so we're going to close the lid and make sure that it's on sealing and not venting. We're going to go around the front here. And I'm going to put it on um, soup. And let's see. I'm going to see. I don't need that long. Okay, we're going to just use our plus button to adjust the time. We're going to cook this uh, bean soup for 35 minutes. And here's why. Um, these are dried beans. We have not soaked them at all. And um, so 35 minutes is a pretty uh, guaranteed way to make sure all your beans are cooked. This 15 bean soup has a variety of beans. There were some uh, large lima beans, kidney beans, black beans. Um, so you wanna go with the maximum amount of time for the size of your beans. And um, th so that since there are some large beans in there, we're gonna do 35 minutes. Um, okay, a word about soaking beans because you can use any kind of beans here. Um, with the Instant Pot, you don't have to soak your beans at all. It's fabulous and you can start, start to finish, you can have a pot of cooked beans in one hour um, compared to soaking it overnight, forgetting, um, not being able to even cook the beans. That's how my life used to be <laughs> before the Instant Pot because I would, I would forget to soak my beans and then I had to come up with something different to cook for dinner. So um, I love that you can just throw them in dry. That being said, they cook a little bit better, even if you just have 20 minutes that you can soak those beans while you're cutting up your onion, they tend to cook a little bit better. Um, if we just put in straight dried beans, sometimes some of those will float up to the top during cooking, and inside the vessel, in the Instant Pot, when you're cooking under pressure, um, okay, let's go back. When you're cooking on the stove, it's bubbling and the food is moving around. When you're cooking under pressure, the pressure causes the food not to move around. So your beans that float up to the top because they're dry, they don't end up getting incorporated in and um, cooking all the way. So 
Sometimes if you do straight dry beans, you'll have a few crunchy beans on the top. My recommendation is to just strain those off right when you open it instead of, um, instead of messing with those beans. If you have some that are obviously dry, just strain them off and get rid of them. Um, so that is that. Have I said everything I need to say about that? Um, okay, oh, what I was saying, when you cook regular beans, you um, wanna just do the water. You'll use a ratio of one pound to, uh, one pound of beans to six cups of water and to use a little bit of oil. We don't need to add a, any oil here because the ham has a little bit of fat on it. Um, okay. So this is not under pressure. I'm gonna just move it so we can show you the pot of beans that we made this morning. And Abigail, would you mind taking this? This is just an empty Instant Pot. Stick it in an out of the way place. We're playing musical Instant Pots this morning. This is still warm from this morning, but the pressure we released earlier. Um, okay, so here are the beans that we just made this morning, and I'm gonna show you how it looks when we open it up. Okay, smells fabulous. I'm always amazed, um, you know, when you're cooking something on the stove, it's kind of, you can smell it cooking, but with the Instant Pot, you don't smell it as much. So see how some of these beans are up on top, um, and they might be a little bit dry, but they look a little bit, uh, a little bit cooked. So you just might taste test a couple of those beans. If you're not really sure, just stir them in and away you go. I, so I forgot to tell you how much water to put in earlier um, when I was pouring in the water. So you want about for every pound of dried beans and you can do about two pounds of dried beans very easily in a six quart. But for every pound of dry beans, you can do, you use six cups of water and it comes out um, just about right for soup and plenty of water. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this ham hock out. So this is the next step you need. And I need those tongs. Okay, this is still very hot. Thank you. Okay. So look at all this yummy meat and those colorful beans in there. And now we're gonna take the meat off of this bone. So see how that marrow came out? There's a lot of marrow that came out, but this is a nice big hunk of ham. And it's it gonna taste so super great. It's easy after it cooks. Yes. Like when you're cutting it off, it like does not come off. It's almost impossible, but after you cook it, it's super easy. Right. I'm also going to pull the bay leaves out so we don't end up with those in our bowl. Okay, and now we're going to work on this little ham. Okay, so we're going to put this on the cutting board. And there we go. And I'm just going to show you how we slice that up. Here's another little chunk of good ham. So yummy, and that is so yummy when you get that in your bowl of soup. So I like to cut it up so that we have lots of little pieces of ham um, in our bowl of soup. Okay, you're gonna wanna cut it against the grain if you can, across the grain, so that'll spread out and be nice and tender in your soup. There we go, looks so good such an, a budget-friendly meal, um, very comforting, really hearty. We just love it. Ham and bean soup. Um, I love it when the kids will cook up a, a, um, a batch of cornbread to go with their, with our ham and bean soup. So this one, this piece is a little bit, uh, has a little bit of cartilage on it and a little bit of fat, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, and we're gonna chop this up. Oh, uh, what are some ways that Lydia and Hannah, Lydia and Hannah are our little girls, um, ways that they can help with beans, bean soup? 
Um, they can probably sort yeah, beans. Yeah, they help the sort beans. Um, it's great for little children um, to be, use their fingers and feel what the beans feel like as they are um, sorting through those. It's a, you can even, if you have extra, extra, extra time, you can count, um, you can count the beans with them, just do a little practice counting. And um, they love to help sort and rinse those, those beans. And um, I feel like it helps kids to enjoy their food more if they're participating in making it and they can kind of have a more open mind, like if they see how beautiful and shiny those beans are, um, it really encourages them in their eating. So, can we, would you mind, I love clearing this off carefully, and then we're going to get, um, we're going to get ready for a new uh, bowl of soup. Here we go. I'll take that. Okay, so we're going to serve this up and have a little taste test. So we're going to stir in the ham. Oh my goodness, it looks fabulous and it smells great. Got all that variety of beans in here. And there you go. So this is one of my husband's favorite meals. So it's just so hearty and so uh, filling and good and very budget friendly. Very budget friendly. Okay. I'm gonna put a little pepper on. Um, we don't salt it until the very end, until we've had a taste because that ham can be a little a little, um, it contributes a lot of seasoning to your beans. Remember, it's super hot. Um, while we wait for this to cool off, I'm going to tell you uh, we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash the cooking fam. And we're also, you'll find us on YouTube, and we would love it for you to go like and subscribe over there. Um, also, we have on our, if you go to our website at thecookingfamily.com, you can sign up to take our free Instant Pot mini course, and um, that has a lot of great getting started um, courses for learning how to use your Instant Pot, and we'd love for you to, um, to sign up for that and share it with your friends too. So let's try it. Mm. That is so good. It is so good. It might actually need just a touch of salt. A little bit, yeah. A little bit of salt, but it's so flavorful. It's so yummy. Um, if your beans are not cooked all the way through, you can just uh, close up your Instant Pot. You can cook it for five more minutes. It's not a problem, except for if you're really super hungry and ready to eat. Your family's all ready. But it'll cook just fine if you have to start it again, and it'll come up to pressure pretty fast because it's already very hot still. So, okay. Thanks for watching. We're so glad you've been here today. Thank you again to the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners community. We're so glad you've been here with us today. And we hope everybody has a great week. We'll see you later. Bye.